Hey guys, John Hansis here coming to you with part two of the series that we're going to be covering and today we'll be covering air freight shipments. Now air freight shipments very similar to the ocean, you're still going to have three divisions of that transportation. You're going to have the original pickup from your vendor, your supplier going to the airport, airport to airport, and then from the airport to the final leg. So once again, depending on the INCO terms that you're using, that will determine pricing points that you may see in variances. So that's something to definitely keep in mind as you're looking at your pricing and your solutions going to door to door or you know the airport to airport. The other two factors you want to really keep in mind when looking at air freight is the pallet that you're using to put the material on and two, the height of that pallet. Now, most passenger carrying aircrafts, they usually, most of them will max out between 62 and 64 inches. So you want to keep your maximum height. I generally suggest, once again, my suggestion, you want to keep that at 60 inches or below. Once you go over that amount, what happens is now it kind of puts you into cargo aircraft upper deck. And basically when you think of upper deck, think of it as like booking a first class seat on an airplane. You're paying for the dimensional space and now you have limited, you have limited options of what you're going to have versus if that cargo can go on the, the belly of the passenger carrying airplanes that gives you many more flight options to and from different places. So once again, keep in mind the pallet height. Uh, you generally want to keep that, I would suggest, at like 60 inches or below. The other set part for the pallet is, depending on where you're sending that pallet, they may have certain standards. Uh, you may have, you know, the, in the UK and so forth, you have the, the European, the Euro skids that you're going to see that a little bit smaller dimension, smaller footprint. So that's something to keep in mind. You also need to keep in mind that most places do not take traditional standard uh, wood pallets. If you're going to use a wood pallet, they either need to be the heat treated, chemical treated, you know, the MDF board. So those are things to keep in mind uh, when using the air freight because those, those countries may have restrictions upon how you're using that skid. Uh, also the strapping, you know, the, the TSA requirements for, for the, the freight, you're gonna wanna use the plastic straps, you know, multiple, multiple two in each direction. Uh, sometimes it'll change depending on the height. So once again, it's to keep those factors in mind when you're doing the air freight. Uh, insurance wise with the air freight, you're gonna be looking at very similar. Um, the the cost of the insurance is very low for what something you would I would suggest insuring because a lot of times things you know jostle as, as in flight and so forth so you know for very minimal amounts uh, you know you're, you're looking at probably ranging anywhere from 50 to 75 cents uh, you know for every hundred dollars that you you know that you're filing for so it's something that you know the cost is very small but something it's definitely uh, a better option than what you would have if something goes wrong or something breaks on that cargo. So keep that one in mind. Uh, and the air freight, you know, very similar to ocean, you're going to see very similar trends with uh, pricing fluctuations depending on where you're going. You know, these are where sometimes the other fuel surcharges are come into play, but also certain ports at certain times of the year are very difficult to get into. Um, I've run into shipments before when I was on the other side in the operations field, you know, shipping stuff, maybe Chinese New Year or certain parts of the year, end of month, end of quarter. If you're trying to book something on their last minute, there's someone that's already booked that space a week ago. So it's definitely something to keep in mind as you're doing air freight that, you know, you have these different levels. Now, as part of another series that we're going to be covering, you have your regular air freight and then you have what's called your next flight out situation, which now makes it you need that immediately sent from A to, you know, A to Z in a very short time span. So those things can be, you know, elevated. But once again, that elevation comes with a certain price tag. So that's something I can cover in the next series. But once again, this was just kind of a basic overview for the air freight. For those of you that may be new to this, maybe you didn't understand some of the terms. So once again, feel free to reach out to me at any point, anytime, questions, comments, concerns. Looking forward to doing these, just kind of providing general content. So it's a big thing I like for you guys. Uh, once again, just give me a holler if you have any questions. Thanks for your time, and I'll come to you tomorrow with the next round.